Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. Today's video is part two of the standard level content for topic 5.2, Agriculture and Food. In this video, we're going to address sustainable agriculture and food security. So let's get into it. The Green Revolution, also known as the Third Agricultural Revolution, transformed global agriculture in the 1950s and 1960s. This movement used the breeding of high yield crop plants combined with increased irrigation systems, synthetic fertilizers, and pesticides to dramatically increase food security. However, this revolution has been criticized for its socio-cultural, economic, and environmental consequences. Understanding both its benefits and its drawbacks can help you think about sustainable approaches to feeding our growing population. The Green Revolution had significant impacts. That's why they call it a revolution. Most importantly, it increased food production, which reduced hunger globally, and it actually slowed rates of land conversion and habitat loss because we could grow more food on the existing farmland. This graph shows land spared as a result of cereal yield improvements. Without these productivity gains, we would have needed to convert an additional 2.3 billion hectares to agriculture. The revolution also brought economic benefits and improved rural employment, although those benefits initially accrued mostly to rich farmers who could afford the new technology. However, the Green Revolution created serious environmental problems. This map shows dead zones and fertilizer use patterns, areas where excess nutrients from synthetic fertilizers have created water pollution and ecosystem damage. You should be able to connect that to eutrophication from topic four, water. The Green Revolution increased pesticide use, impacting both biodiversity and human health. Connected back to topic three, economically, benefits mainly went to wealthy farmers at first, and that widened inequality. There was also a loss of traditional agricultural knowledge and an increased dependence on fossil fuels through synthetic fertilizer production. This brings us to one of the key trade-offs in modern agriculture. Synthetic fertilizers are needed in many intensive systems to maintain high commercial productivity, but this comes at the expense of sustainability. In sustainable agriculture, there are alternative methods for improving soil fertility that work with natural systems rather than against them. Here you can see a fundamental difference in how we can approach soil fertility. Organic fertilizers feed the soil by adding organic matter and that organic matter supports soil microorganisms, which then provide nutrients to plants. This creates a healthy soil ecosystem, supporting the entire system. Chemical fertilizers, on the other hand, bypass this system by feeding plants directly, and they can actually harm soil microorganisms and reduce the long-term soil health. The question asks, what's the difference in terms of soils as systems? The answer is that organic approaches maintain soil as a living system, while the synthetic approaches can degrade soil health over time. Composting is just the best. Composting represents one sustainable alternative to synthetic fertilizers. Compost, animal manure, and green manure add nutrients while improving soil water retention. These organic inputs feed soil organisms that create healthy soil structure and provide slow release nutrients to the plants. Green manure consists of growing plants specifically to be plowed back into the soil as fertilizer. This practice adds both organic matter and nutrients to the soil while improving its overall structure and its water holding capacity. It's a way of using living plants to build soil health rather than depleting the soil health. This diagram shows how sustainable techniques like fallowing, crop rotation, and cover crops can replenish soil nutrients cyclically. Notice how legumes like soybeans and peanuts have bacteria in root nodules that take nitrogen from the air and they fix it into the soil in forms that the plants can access. Different crops contribute different nutrients, so rotating them maintains soil fertility naturally. Agroforestry systems cycle nutrients through tree-crop interactions. This farmer combines trees, food crops, horticulture, and livestock into one integrated system. The trees provide nutrients through leaf fall, they help retain soil and water, and they create beneficial microclimates for the crops below. This represents a more complex, but often more sustainable approach than monoculture systems. A variety of techniques can be used to conserve soil, bringing widespread environmental, economic, and sociocultural benefits. Soil conservation is important because soil formation is an extremely slow process. Think back to what you learned in topic two about succession. Soil formation can take hundreds of years to form just a few centimeters of topsoil, but erosion can remove it all in a single storm. This dramatic landscape shows terracing, one of the most effective methods for controlling water erosion on slopes. Terraces slow the water flow, and that allows it to soak into the soil rather than washing the soil away. This technique, when it's combined with contour plowing and proper drainage, 
can make steep slopes really productive while preventing erosion. This diagram shows alley cropping, where you cultivate crops in alleys between regularly spaced rows of trees or shrubs. The system provides multiple benefits. The trees can act as windbreaks, which reduces wind erosion. The tree roots can help hold the soil in place, and they can also provide additional income through timber or fruit. Trees also create those beneficial microclimates for crops that we saw in an earlier slide. This picture shows Italian ryegrass being used as a cover crop between rows of corn after the corn has been harvested. Cover crops protect soil from erosion while adding nutrients and organic matter. Mixed cropping, where different crops are grown together, prevents soil nutrient depletion by using complementary plants that have different nutrient needs and demands. This lush growth shows intercropping, beans growing among corn plants. This system exemplifies how cultivation techniques can conserve soils. The beans, being legumes, replenish the soil nitrogen that the corn uses. Meanwhile, the corn provides vertical structure to help the beans grow upwards and reach more sunlight, which boosts both photosynthesis and productivity. This kind of partnership benefits both crops while maintaining soil health. It also happens to be a part of a healthy, balanced diet. Now let's consider how our food choices affect sustainability. Humans are omnivores. We have diets that include fungi, plants, meat, and fish. However, diets lower in trophic levels are more sustainable because they require less land, less water, and less energy to produce the same amount of nutrition. This ecological pyramid shows why eating lower on the food chain is more efficient. The more people eat from the producer level, plants, the less water and land is needed to feed a growing human population. Only about 10% of energy transfers from one trophic level to the next. So that means producing meat requires much more resources than producing plant foods directly. This diagram shows the resource implications of eating at different trophic levels. The higher up the food chain we eat, the more greenhouse gases are released and the more water and land are needed for agriculture. This doesn't mean everybody needs to become vegetarian, but if you understand these relationships, it'll help you make more informed dietary choices. Current global strategies to achieve sustainable food supplies focus on several key areas reducing demand and food waste, reducing greenhouse gas emissions from food production, and increasing productivity without increasing the area of land that's used for agriculture. These represent a shift away from simply producing more food to producing more food more efficiently and more sustainably. This graph shows remarkable progress in agricultural productivity. From 1961 to 2021, global cereal yields increased from 1.4 to 4.2 thousand kilograms per hectare meaning farmers today produce on average three times as much corn, oats, rice, or wheat in the same amount of land. This land sparing effect has been really important for feeding our growing population without converting even more natural habitat to agriculture. Food security represents the ultimate goal of sustainable agriculture. It's defined as the physical and economic availability of food, allowing all individuals to get the balanced diet that they need for an active and healthy life. This definition emphasizes that food security isn't just about total production. It's about access, it's about affordability, and it's about nutrition quality. This diagram from Gapminder shows the stark reality of global food security. While 70% of people have enough food, 19% or about one in five people experience basic food insecurity, and about one in 10 sometimes go without meals entirely. The correlation with wealth is pretty clear the poorest people experience the highest rates of food insecurity. That raises important questions about what factors influence these differing levels of food security around the world. Food security depends on four interconnected pillars, availability, access, utilization, and stability. Availability depends on domestic production, food stocks, imports, and food aid. Access depends on political, economic, and social factors, including the equitable distribution and purchasing power. Utilization requires food safety, food quality, and proper preparation along with clean water and healthcare. Stability means maintaining all three other pillars over time without the risk of loss due to economic, political, or environmental factors. That's it for our exploration of sustainable agriculture and food security in ESS Topic 5.2. Remember that feeding humanity sustainably requires balancing productivity with environmental production, considering both equity and efficiency, and combining traditional knowledge with technological innovation. The challenges are complex, but if you understand those systems, that can help give us the foundation to work towards solutions that can nourish both people and the planet. Until next time, happy learning.